Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin tonight's action, I have a few announcements to make about SummerSlam and what we saw last week. First off, I would like to announce that Mustafa Ali will get his rematch for the ECW Cruiserweight Championship against Buddy Murphy on the SummerSlam pre-show and that the DCC, Downfall and the Wyatt family will meet for the ECW Tag Team titles in a triple threat ladder match. Lastly, and rather sadly, I would also like to announce that Kofi Kingston will be out for an elongated period of time following last week's heinous assault on him. The doctors expect him to make a full recovery, but it will take some time. Thank you, and enjoy the show. Seth Rollins puts out the challenge to Johnny Gargano. Johnny Wrestling accepts. We are on for SummerSlam. The mark of the DCC is struck. McIntyre not pleased with the news earlier this evening. John Cena and Kofi Kingston with the ECW television title on the line. John Cena retains the television title. The Clockwork Project put the boots on Cena. The hell does he mean? What casualty of war? What are you doing, you sick son of a- OH NO! Hello everyone and welcome! This is ECW! We are one week away from the biggest stage of the summer. That's right. Two more shows to go until SummerSlam. We are here in Albuquerque, New Mexico and a big main event to come our way this evening. Main event of the evening, Drew McIntyre to go one-on-one -on -one with the number one contender to the ECW Championship. One half of SummerSlam's main event, Johnny Gargano. That is to come at the end of the evening. And what an evening of action it is going to be. And with some announcements already made for SummerSlam, this may add an extra added edge to this contest to kick us off on ECW this evening. Akira Tozawa to go one-on-one -on -one against Buddy Murphy. You know, of course, as I just announced, that Mustafa Ali will get his rematch for the Cruiserweight Championship on the pre-show of SummerSlam, joining Magnum Opus versus Supremacy on that short and sweet pre-show before we make it to the biggest stage of the summer. It is so close, ladies and gentlemen. Just over a week away until we make it to that event. Brooklyn is not ready for what's to come its way. It's going to be one hell of an evening, no doubt about it. Could be a big evening this one, though, for uh, Akira Tozawa, who's been given a huge opportunity here to prove himself against the man who walked into the chamber, started it, and left with the title. At least one of them did it. That's a little bit of a sly dig there, but here he comes, ladies and gentlemen, the brand new Cruiserweight Champion. No longer the best kept secret, but rather calls himself the best damn thing on ECW. Buddy Murphy heading towards the ring. He felt proud, he felt relieved, he felt like he earned his victory in the Elimination Chamber and in all fairness to him, yeah he did, he walked in there and he told everyone he was going to win it and he won it, he stayed true to his word and as a result he left a champion, Buddy Murphy though ready to kick off his reign with a bang here tonight and of course next Sunday against Mustafa Ali. Ali will be gunning for that rematch. Remember, Murphy pinned him in that ring. And that was a, uh, a, a, a tough moment, really, for Ali to take in his stride, for him to understand, for him to be able to really cope with. Beaten by the man who went on to win the chamber as well. That must be so tough to sit within you but it happened and Ali's got to try and bounce back next week in Brooklyn with that title on the line right now though Akira Tozawa and Murphy locking horns here to get us going should be some exciting matches to come away Tetsuya Naito in action later on this evening seeing John Cena as well 
Well, that is nice for SummerSlam, of course, with that, uh, and that's with the top of the show. A triple threat ladder match to come our way. They wanted to go to war for so long in ECW. It's already started back at Living Dangerously, but mark my words, it will end next Sunday. Between downfall the DCC and the Wyatt family. DCC and Wyatt family will meet up next as the leaders will collide. Bray Wyatt will go on one-on-one -on -one against Chris Saban. As for right now, we focus on what's going on in the ring between Buddy Murphy and Akira Tozawa, wherever Mustafa Ali is. I don't know if he's in the arena here tonight or not. He has got to be watching this one with a close eye. Ali didn't have to come to this uh, episode of ECW as he wasn't going to be on the show, but he still could have shown up. Again, an oh-so-close eye on the man who he will get his rematch with next Sunday for that Cruiserweight tight dump. Right now, though, Akira Tozawa looking to impress in the opportunity that's been granted his way. See what he can do here before him in the face of the champion. Tozawa giving up some height and some weight. Buddy Murphy, a guy who has to ride the limit to 205. Akira Tozawa, well outside of that 205 limit. In a good way, really. For this division. Good forearm there. Takes Murphy off his feet. Let's put the fight back. Look out now. Buddy Murphy demonstrating his power advantage as he drives him into the mat with that power bomb. Just absolute strength from the best damn thing on ECW. Kazawa making life difficult for him. Tornado DDT takes the champ down. Tazawa sees a big opportunity in front of him. Cover made here. Will it play off? No. Kick out made at the count of one there. Tazawa switching in some kind of body lock here. Got the leg wrapped in. Got the arm stretching back as well. But Murphy will be quick to fight out here. Good stuff there from Murphy. And there is Murphy's actions really that led to the Elimination Chamber bout that we witnessed at the uh, paper, that the same named pay-per-view. It was a fast-paced chamber. Murphy headed in there. Unfortunate in his own way to start it, but boy, did he make the most of it going on to win the whole thing and become ECW Cruiserweight Champion and almost sealed the victory here over Akira Tozawa. He kicks out at two. Murphy though staying on the offensive right now, not giving Tazawa a moment to breathe. The champ wants to own this match, he wants to control it, and Tazawa is not going to let it happen. Sweeping the leg away, there are the champ as we head back into the ring now. What kind of risk could Tazawa take? With a dazed Murphy, he will go to the top rope. Tazawa looking to fly. Cross bodies down. Could this get a huge win for Tazawa? No, kick out of two. Big moment there, though. Big moment indeed for Tazawa. Back suplex. Has a bridge. Shoulders down. Kick out at one. And drop kicks down on the face of Buddy Murphy now, making sure that he stays in his place and that really Tozawa can keep the control going. Look at the strength now in this Tiger Suplex. Great stuff there. Tozawa making the most of it, this opportunity that's presented in front of him. Elbow drop misses with it. German Suplex now from Murphy. Give him a little opening and he will pounce on it. That's the ammo of Buddy Murphy. And that's what can make someone a champion. Tozawa's gonna look to do the same here now though. Throws Murphy to the outside, but an opening contest we're getting this far on ECW. Suicide dive from Tozawa on Murphy. A part of Murphy connected off the barricade there. You couldn't really see it on the cameras. That's what stopped them going flying further. And this Albuquerque crowd is right. This match is rocking so far. Tozawa lying in wait for Murphy now off that suicide dive. Looking to take a big risk. Oh, the champ had it red. But Tozawa quick to counter him. Look out now. Shining wizard. 
Could this be a huge moment, a huge upset for Tazawa? Set to no! Murphy got that ease up in time. He thought he had him right then and there. But Murphy breaking out the counter, splashes down on Tazawa now. And just looking to finish him off, looking to try and make sure that that can't arise at a second wind, can't come for Tazawa. Huge running knee. And Murphy will line up in place for the finishing blow. Here we go, Murphy's Law. One, two, three. Buddy Murphy wins in his first match as Cruiserweight Champion. But boy, oh boy, did Akira Tozawa look to test him in that contest. Murphy reigns supreme as the champion getting off the best way that you can with a big win and heading into SummerSlam, heading into a straight one-on-one -on -one contest with Ali. That is exactly what he needs. Buddy Murphy, though, hasn't quite finished this evening. Microphone for him in the corner. He's got a few pieces that he wants to say. Following on from last week, where he already had quite a bit to say. Nothing but flat out confidence being exuberated by the champion right now. Murphy's law rules, but will it reign supreme at SummerSlam? Buddy Murphy knows what he's getting himself into and he's more than okay with running his mouth as he seeks another win of a Mustafa Ali. Well, there would seem to be trouble in the ranks of the British Empire. Three, two, one. Right now, we move on to our next contest of the evening. Leaders meet one-on-one, -on -one. Chris Saban against Bray Wyatt, the leader of the DCC, against the leader of the Wyatt family. Boy, oh boy, have they been locking their heads these last few weeks, all three factions, weeks and months, really. And now it all comes to a, a conclusion at SummerSlam next Sunday, that triple threat ladder match to come our way, the, ta the tag team titles on the line. It should be a big evening for all three teams involved, and I'm looking forward and I'm excited to see how it will go, as I am for this one. I don't think we've seen these two leaders clash one-on-one -on -one before. Wait a... Oh! My goodness! Harper! Lay down Bray Wyatt with a discus clothesline! But wait! Here comes Alistair Black! Black Mass! Downfall getting one up on the Wyatts! But Wyatts getting one up on the DCC! Oh my goodness, Rusev 
has laid out Kendrick again. Complete anarchy in that moment on ECW, ladies and gentlemen. Just whew, so much going on there. But the action must roll on in that case this evening. And roll on, it will. Coming up next, strap yourselves in. We've got some strong style on our way. Because look who's, I mean, listen to who's making his way out right now. That's right, Minoru Suzuki is in action. And his opponent will be none other than El Ingobernable, Tetsuya Naito. This one, I mean, you know, with all the chaos really to talk about from that, from that moment and all the bad blood that's really boiling over on ECW as we head into SummerSlam. This one's just going to be as per always when Minoru Suzuki gets in the ring. They're just going to fight. That's all they're going to do. They're going to fight. We're going to sit back and we're going to enjoy it. Minoru Suzuki picked up a big win a few weeks back at ECW when he went in the ring one-on-one -on -one against Hiroki Goto and left with a pretty big win because it got Minoru Suzuki back into talking points, back to having attention on him, some eyes on him on ECW. And it was vital for him to uh, have that as well. And now I'm looking forward to seeing what will come the way of Suzuki potentially in this one because imagine what it would mean for him to pick up a monumental win over a guy like Tetsuya Naito. Uh, sorry, yeah, like Tetsuya Naito with, I mean, Goto first, Naito next. Where would that put Suzuki in some rankings, in some title talks, in some big match talks? It's a really big question to ask, but he's got to go through none other than El Ingobernable here tonight, and that's going to be a tall order for him. But if there was anyone who could pull that off, you'd have to imagine it would be Minoru Suzuki. He just, you know, it, it, he's a guy who doesn't really need to study tapes of his opponents because he just walks in the ring and hits them until they stay down. That's what makes him so dangerous. You, you can study the tapes all you want. You know what he's going to do. And even then, you might not be tough enough to stop him from doing it. He is a dangerous, dangerous man. But he puts on some entertaining matches, though, let's be honest. But so, too, does this man as well. Naito coming towards the ring. First time we've seen him since the Elimination Chamber, since his victory last Sunday over Zack Sabre Jr. Coming back to ECW with a bang and with a well-earned win for his right as well. Naito, of course, wanted to get himself in some title talks as well. Whether or not they'll be coming the way of uh, Naito right away, we have to see. But right now, he comes towards the ring. Albuquerque happy to see him, as am I. He really just found his... I mean, he came back to ECW and he was just... He clicked right away. Everything just was there for Naito from the very get-go. He had no problems whatsoever. He arrived and just... It was like he had never left. Came back, of course, the Good Brothers went the way. SmackDown Live, and of course, they've just found success yesterday. Huge congratulations to them on uh, their win on SmackDown Live. Of course, I won't spoil it in case you haven't seen SmackDown Live, but well, I kind of just did because I said huge win, but still. Nevertheless, Naito ready to go here. Might not be on the SummerSlam card, but that does not mean that an opportunity after it could present itself to Naito. Same goes for Suzuki. Think about last week to uh, Tyler Bate and Randy Orton. Yes, they had their grudge with one another when they, when they were facing off but it could all lead towards something bigger and better in the future. Bell rings right now, and we are underway between these two men. Suzuki's going to kick and strike at Naito, going to swing away at him until Naito can't stand anymore, going to torture the limbs of Naito, and then when Naito thinks and hopes that it might be all over, drive his head into the mat with a gotch-style pile driver and pick up the one, two, three. That'll be Minoru Suzuki's game plan because it's the same game plan he has heading into every single match and most of the time it seems to work Naito however will be a little bit more different Suzuki likes to play rough he likes to go right in there swinging right away Naito might want to play the mind games might want to take things slow a little bit tranquilo See, all really just play to Suzuki's games right away and try and maybe take Suzuki by surprise. Look at, look at the strength there from Suzuki, former King of Prank, Pancras. And 
everything about Suzuki is legitimate. The fear that the crowd feels when they see him, the chills that run down your spine when that music hits. It's all legitimate because we all know how much of a badass Minoru Suzuki really is. Anyone who gets in the ring with him is brave, that's for certain. And anyone who leaves with a win over him is even braver. But Suzuki remembers his losses, so it could also be stupid. Elbows there in the corner by Naito. Cover made on Suzuki. Kick out at one. Ringo Benable probably doesn't care, though, let's be honest. If Naito... Uh, if you were in Naito's boots, or... Well, Naito's in his own boots, and he doesn't really care about anyone or anything other than himself. And getting the band back together, of course. We saw that talk before Elimination Chamber with Hiromu Takahashi backstage about the uh, potentiality of the band getting back together. And, of course, we saw that... Um, Evil, Sonada, winning the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. They'll go on to NXT TakeOver Brooklyn to compete and contend for those ECW Tag Team titles. That one should be very interesting coming next weekend, just before SummerSlam, of course. We'll be taking on the new foundation. I imagine Naito and Takahashi are going to be watching somewhere. For the hopefulness that maybe they can get the band back together. And with a bit of gold around their waist. Just speculating, but right now Naito can't focus on Evil Sonata or Takahashi. He's instead going to focus on being stuck in the ring with a man like Minoru Suzuki. He goes to the chin lock now, trying to wear down Naito here. Trying to that could even be a sleeper hold. Let's be real with Suzuki. You never know what kind of <laughs> what move he might be looking to execute. Kind of made there by Naito, or fighting his way out of it rather with the double back elbows. Turns him round now. Oh, down on the neck and the back there. Good work. Strong work. Naito turns him around again. You know any time he turns him around, there is the potentiality that Destino could come reigning in. Huge drop kick now. Let's see what else will happen here up to their feet. They go. Naito, though, counted, sent in the turnbuckle by Suzuki. Oh, this is going to hurt. But, but the arm isn't meant to bend in that direction. Suzuki doesn't care, though. What a maniac he is! And he loves it. Every bit of it. Look out, now he's got the leg. He has got that leg stitched in. Look at that hold. Ripping, talking at the leg of Naito. Will he tap out? You know, kicks his way free. Dangerous, dangerous hold to be in. Especially when it's Suzuki executing as well. Who is Ill in complete control of this contest? As it currently stands. And he goes to work on the leg again. And Naito here. Down on it. I know Naito had problems in his knee. But I don't know if that's the good knee or the bad knee. What I do know is this match could be over in a hurry. Gotch style pile driver. No. Naito able to use his momentum to fling himself out of that huge flying forearm. Saving grace there for Naito in that moment. He was in big, big trouble. Top rope we go now. What will Naito look for here with Suzuki? Superplex. Got him. Got all of that one. Suzuki not moving after it either. Naito taking a while to recover, feeling the wear and tear. Here it comes, Puma Blanchard. Koji clutches locked in by Naito. Will it be enough for submission? Will Suzuki tap out here? Not a chance. A forceful elbow gets himself out of that hold. Naito counters him there. In the corner we go now. Yes, Suzuki comes stumbling out of it. So much force. Destino! Maybe when you least expect it, it strikes. Naito covers. And it's over. Win, win, win for Naito. He is racking them up on ECW. It's like he never left. And he's making the absolute most of it. Another victory in his books. What does it hold in the near future?
Well, with that man watching on, maybe our answer is getting closer and closer. Coming up right now, though, folks. It's the champ. The television champ is making his way out. Last week, he was laid out in the ring courtesy of the Clockwork Project, but that won't keep him down. John Cena is here again this evening, and he said that he had, he had something to say following from last week. He had something he wanted to do about last week. As I announced at the top of the evening that Kofi Kingston will be out for a, a long, uh, an elongated period of time following on from that assault. Your sword as well, just after that, it was a truly, truly sickening thing. Just the fact that I have to let stuff like this stand because of the contract that that man is on is just, it's just revolting. After a, an entertaining main event as well between John Cena and Kofi Kingston. That's forgotten now. All we remember is that action. And it's horrible. It's horrific. But it's what we remember. It's what everyone will remember, I think. And I think out of everything from last week, it is what this guy remembers. Not beating Kofi. Not celebrating his moment uh, uh, on the first ECW as television champion. But rather, what happened after the bell had rung. I think that's all that sits through this man's mind. John Cena ready here with something to say. Takes the microphone into his hand now. It's completely off limits for Cena. He can say whatever he wants to. And I, I don't blame him one bit either. Wanted to be a fighting champion, did John Cena again this week? But taken away from him due to what he had to witness, shall we say? I'm not. I'm not. I don't know if this is a brave decision, John. But he's. You know what he's doing there. He's not addressing him by name, but you damn well know who he's talking about. And there is the delivery. Cena wants Corrin in this ring right now. No ref, no title on the line, nothing. Just a straight fight between the two of them. And here he comes. Here he comes right now towards the ring. Corin is here. Cena wants this fight. And you know, you know Corin wants it as well. After what happened at Elimination Chamber, after what he did last week, everything is brewing between these two men. And the fight is on. Cena swings first. Here we go. Between these bitter, bitter rivals. Seen again the one up here on Corin. Let this stand. Don't get any security in that ring. Don't get anyone to try and split it up. No one at all. Leave them fight. They want this. Let it happen. And let it happen. We shall. Cena swinging away in the turnbuckle on Corin. Corin comes up with the counter though. And a huge close under the back of Cena. I don't know if this was wise from Cena or not to just. Asked Corwin for a straight fight, but he's got it right now. He agreed to leave Callahan and Lee back there. And now he stands in the ring and he's scrapping with Cena and he's getting the upper hand on him. He is getting one up on John Cena right now. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. This has all quickly fallen apart as Cena's plan. Double under suplex into the mat. Corin has him right where he wants him right now. No! Clock strikes 12. Cena asked for the fight. 
And not only is he finishing it, but he is pulling an exclamation point on it. Clock strikes 12 again. And Corin wants to end things next Sunday at SummerSlam. Folks, we have one more show to go between now and SummerSlam. And next week, I can reveal I will sit down for an interview with Corin in what may be the bravest, stupidest, and final decision that I could have as the general manager of this show. But in terms of the wrestling, oh, we're going big. It's a WrestleMania rematch. Adam Cole, Seth Rollins, next week's main event. You cannot afford to miss next week's ECW already. But right now, it is time for our main event. And what has been a very sobering edition of ECW that has brought us in many ways back down to earth. But a big main event and a big opportunity for this man because he knows he wins and SummerSlam will await him because that is what he wants. Drew McIntyre to face the number one contender to the ECW title in Johnny Gargano. Last week, we witnessed at the opening of the show, Johnny Gargano making his way out and saying that he failed, that he let everyone down at the Elimination Chamber. He didn't know when his next chance would be, but he knew he had to earn it and fight for it. Rollins made his way out in that moment and said that he had nothing to feel sorry for. He fought like a champion and he should have been one. And Rollins challenged him to a match at SummerSlam. Gargano accepted it and the jaw jacking began. Later on that evening, backstage McIntyre stating that Gargano didn't earn a single opportunity because he hadn't beaten Seth Rollins. McIntyre had heading into the Elimination Chamber. But... The key thing is, is that McIntyre was nowhere in that chamber. Not an elimination to his name, and he entered last. And he wasn't even in the final two. He went out right in the midfield. He wasted his opportunity, but Gargano offered him the fight and said, fine, win, and we'll put you in. And he can take that opportunity. He can go to SummerSlam, and he can be a triple threat match instead. And if the crowd is making this reaction for Gargano right now, what will it be like in Brooklyn next Sunday when he makes his way out in one of the hottest arenas in this country? Brooklyn is always a wild one. How are they going to react to the number one contender with the opportunity of a lifetime in front of him? One on one, history will be made whatever happens that evening. But will it be one-on-one? -on -one? Am I getting too ahead of myself? Because if Drew McIntyre wins here this evening, it's a triple threat match. And all of a sudden, all the hopes, all the desire that both men wanted in terms of just meeting in that ring one-on-one -on -one and settling what they started Elimination Chamber could be taken away from them in the reality of a snap of a finger and a count of three. That's our main event this evening. McIntyre wants in. Gargano essentially playing the gatekeeper to the main event of SummerSlam. And here we go. Colin Nebo tie up and we get underway between these two men. McIntyre and Gargano locking horns. I know Rollins is in the building. We, do, we were talking before the show went on the air. He said he could have stayed at home and trained, but he wanted a close eye on this match. He wanted to make his notes about Gargano heading into SummerSlam. He's already written his eulogy, really, on Drew McIntyre from how many times they faced off. He knows the strengths and weaknesses of McIntyre. Gargano, though, needs to learn in this main event here this evening. He needs to study in this main event this evening. And so he shall as these two men get underway. I, I, I have to question, I know I should be focusing on this match right now, but I have to question for Gargano. Will there be any jitters getting to him? Win or lose here this evening? Take that out of the equation. He heads into SummerSlam. He's been there before, but not 
in a situation like this. Not when he's having a chance for an ECW championship and not in the main event of SummerSlam as well. You have to remember, SummerSlam at this point is Seth Rollins' show. It is where, almost two years ago now, it began. The historic reign of Seth Rollins. And of course, next Sunday, if he wins again, then two years will call him. But it's not just about Gargano, it's about McIntyre. Wanted to make an opportunity. Huge sit-out spine buster there. Cover made on Gargano, only one. The resiliency of Johnny Wrestling shining through early on there. I, I said it when Gargano made his way out. History will be made either way. Because either Seth Rollins will go on to stand as an ECW champion for two years. Or one of these two men potentially could break that reign and become the ECW champion. That's why it's the main event to SummerSlam. This is the biggest reign we've ever had in this universe. This is the greatest reign we've ever had. It's the greatest superstar we've ever had in this universe. SummerSlam is his show, but right now, all we're focusing on, who's going to focus on, is this contest right now. Breaking the ropes there, and look at this now. McIntyre talking down. Was that to Gargano or Neville? We saw those two men, members of the British Empire, with a squabble backstage at the start of this evening. McIntyre and Neville getting into it with one another. Neville saying that his men are failing the Empire and McIntyre saying that at least they are able to succeed when Neville can't and maybe the failure should be looking to the leadership of the British Empire not instead to the lackeys, the admirals, whatever they want to call themselves McIntyre right now they're just demonstrating his vicious brutal strength as he throw as he clotheslines Gargano to the outside now what are we going to see here from the psychopath that he can be down on the barricade Gargano's ribs are going to be feeling that one up on the shoulders now dangerous place to be Gargano wriggles his way off the reverse DDT on the outside little work there by Gargano gets him free into the barricade now look out rough riding coming as McIntyre's back is sent into it. Gargano knows he's got to pace himself in this contest. He's got to take things. He's got to be brash. He's got to take risks. But he's also got to try and save himself really for next Sunday. Because he's in that ring with Seth Rollins and he can't make excuses. He didn't make excuses in all fairness at Elimination Chamber. But he absolutely can't afford to make any in the main event of SummerSlam. Look out now. Oh my goodness! Gargano tried to move himself out of the way. McIntyre wasn't there. Huge kick in the chest. Is it victory? No. Shoulders up at two. McIntyre is just, I don't want to say dominating, but he is damaging. Johnny Gargano, that's for certain. Drives him into the mat now. And again, another cover, another attempt to take him to the main event of SummerSlam, and another kick out from Johnny Gargano. They know what an opportunity this could be for the British Empire. Will Neville see it fit to get involved? Reverse Alabama Slam now. And the boot is being loaded up in the corner. The Claymore could strike. No! Gargano evades. Gargano evades. Smart to get out of the way when he did. Gargano finds his opening. And the punches come raining down on McIntyre. All ten of them. Gargano's getting tested in this main event right now. There's no doubt about it, but he's not giving up in this moment. And the turnbuckle, huge uppercut there. See how much torque was put into that one, how much emphasis was put on that uppercut. And he got all of it, that's for certain. Look out now, spinning kick in the gut. Gargano brings him in. Rolling cutter. Nailed all of that one. Covers made to finish off McIntyre, no. I, I know both these guys well. And if I know anything about Rollins and Gargano is that, that they don't want 
Drew McIntyre in this match. They wanted to just be those two guys. And all fairness, it's what I want as well. McIntyre's an incredible talent, yes. And he deserves his opportunity in the sunshine as ECW champion as well, even if I disagree with the British Empire. But after Elimination Chamber, and after all the response we saw from those who tuned in, all we want is Rollins and Gargano. Oh, God, look at the strength though from McIntyre. He doesn't care what he wants. It's about what he wants. It's about what the British Empire wants. An almighty superplex there. McIntyre, the most recent person to have defeated Seth Rollins, albeit with some underhanded tactics, removing that turnbuckle pad before striking with the Claymore. And right in front of Neville now. Gargano getting in some offense. Comes charging back in the ring with that missile drop kick. Quick enough that Neville couldn't have got his hands on him. And even if Neville did, that would have been a DQ. And any hopes of the main event to SummerSlam dashed. Look at the strength. Look at the strength of him. Lord darts him. Right into that second turnbuckle. Neville distracting the referee though. Denying the opportunity for Gargano escape and a victory. Discus forearm takes him down. Chopping the chest from McIntyre though. Right back up to his feet and right away swinging. What a main event we're being treated to right now. Both these guys want this opportunity more than anything else. Gargano desperate to keep it one on one and I don't blame him. Headbutt now! McIntyre could be about to finish those hopes and dreams. He lines up Gargano. Claymore kick! It strikes! And it could well be a triple threat match. McIntyre covers the bloody Gargano. And he kicks out at two. The shoulder wrap at two. Gargano busted open, but not giving in. He kicks out. And he'll go to the turnbuckle again. But McIntyre pushes him away as soon as he can. He ain't giving in to this opportunity. Neither is Gargano. Neck breaker. Top rope, he will go now. Double foot stomp. Down on McIntyre. Gargano's in. He sees the opening. And he'll take it. Gargano escape. McIntyre tapped to this and living dangerously. So close to the ropes, yet so far away. Can he make them? Can he fight out? Drew McIntyre. He's gonna tap. Johnny Gargano wins. Gargano versus Rollins, still on for next Sunday. Gargano does it. Oh no, Neville's charging the ring. They couldn't, they couldn't just amply wait by. McIntyre may be down, but Neville wants to make his own point. The boots being put there. On Johnny Gargano as he's down. McIntyre going out of the ring. And he's going straight to business here. Taking apart the announce table. They are looking to victimize Gargano. There's Rollins! With a chair shot to the head of McIntyre. Neville is none the wiser. Power bomb on the table by Rollins. In the ring he comes now. Sling blade! That'll take care of Neville! And he retreats out of the ring! Gargano steering to his feet! The champion just saved his own challenger! And they stare off with one another again! But this time Rollins with another statement to Gargano! Rollins makes the save of Gargano but puts him in his place. This is the closest he says that he will ever get. The main event of SummerSlam brimming, boiling as we head towards Brooklyn.